one of the main iconic bridges in the Twin Cities has collapsed. The flames are very close to that school bus. There are cars on fire right now. It was just black smoke, black smoke everywhere. Cars stuck on the bridge. The bridge was collapsed, but I couldn't tell how big. Well, I remember I just recorded for about an hour straight and didn't even stop recording. Just shot to shot to shot to shot to shot to shot to shot. You're standing there watching cars burn. And then firemen came, they were trying to put out the fires, but they couldn't go on the bridge because the bridge was, you know, nobody knew what really had happened. I was right there beneath the bridge, like I walked up 10th Avenue and then sort of headed to the west there and boom, we saw the bridge and it was literally hanging down broken with cars underneath in various stages of where they stopped or where they got stuck or, you know, some were on fire, some were not. Uh, and the firemen were trying to put the fire out, firefighters were trying to put the fire out. Probably the biggest thing I remember about that day is pulling up to the scene, seeing smoke and flame on the far end of the bridge. And the first thing I noticed was a school bus and a truck. The truck was on fire right next to a school bus and children were being ferried off the bus. That's how fast we were there. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I looked over the railing. There were cars in the water, cars on sections of bridge, the bridge was in the water. It formed this, this big bowed piece of concrete. I remember being incredulous at what we saw because we thought bodies in the water, really, what does that mean? And then when you see it and you realize the magnitude of what happened, then you knew uh, this was something. The chopper is not going to be over the site. It's going to get close. They put everybody out of the airspace. It was all hands on deck. So you, you had to realize at that moment that this is, you know, it's a national story right instantly. Everyone was all hands on deck. Uh, immediately I was given the assessment of what was going on, where our crews were at that time and where I needed to, to get the crew. It was hard not to take all that in right then, but you have to, you have to push on and, uh, and get the story told. Uh, you can probably hear the helicopters overhead. When you uh, made your way down to this kind of access point, then you could just see, I mean, the tangled wreckage, and it, it was hard to really even understand what it was you were looking at. I mean, that's how surreal it was. And the idea that even hours later, you're still wondering how many more people might be down there, how many might be trapped, how many might be dead. How in the world does something like this just fall into the river? I couldn't believe it. It gave me chills and it still does today. I had been made aware and made contact with um, one 10-year-old victim who was on that school bus. She survived, as all the kids on that bus did, but she had a cell phone. 10 years old, she had a cell phone and she had called her mom to let her know what had happened and her mom didn't answer. She left her mom this horrifying voicemail screaming and crying and in tears trying to describe what had happened and panicked obviously and her mom shared that voicemail with me and we talked to her mom and we talked to her that following day and I can't imagine a mother learning about your child being on a school bus and being in that situation and missing that phone call and hearing that horrifying sound from your child about how scared and panicked they were spoke to a man who lives in a building right over here behind us. People were talking about it all over the world. We discussed why it happened. We discussed bridge safety in a way we never had before that. 